you want to know what it is? You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? Once upon a time, we used gold, or paper that represented safely stored gold, as money. It worked well for thousands of years, partly because gold is independent, and partly because it keeps its purchasing power. An ounce of gold buys you as much food, clothing, and energy as it did 50, or 150, or 1,550 years ago. Compare that to modern money, which seems to buy you less and less each year. A hundred years ago, when the Federal Reserve Bank was formed, a dollar would buy you this much oil. Fifty years ago, it bought you this much. Now, it buys you this much. That's not very much, is it? In fact, in the hundred years since the Federal Reserve Bank was formed to protect the currency, the purchasing power of the dollar has fallen by this much. Why did governments stop using gold? In 1914, the British and German governments were committed to various spending programs and World War I, a war that probably needn't have happened, and neither had the money or gold to pay for it. So they took their countries off the gold standard and, free of its restraints, printed the money they needed. In 1971, the American government was committed to various spending programs and Vietnam, a war that probably needn't have happened. And it didn't have the money or gold to pay for it. So it took America off the gold standard and, free of its restraints, printed the money it needed. Sound familiar? If governments didn't have the power to run up deficits, these wars could never have happened. There wasn't the gold to pay for them. The bill is eventually paid by the people through the stealth tax that is currency devaluation by inflation. Now the world operates under a system of money and credit known as fiat. It's the law that what we use as money be money. The government and its banking agencies have the power to issue money, but no one else may do so. Unlike gold, of which there is a finite amount in the world, with this fiat system there is no limit to how much money can be created, so inflation becomes inevitable. You only need to take a look at these prices at this petrol forecourt to see that drivers are definitely feeling the pain of rising inflation. Drivers are already paying $15 million a day more for petrol than they did a year ago, which means getting from A to B is just going to get even more expensive. I'm filling up cars every day. I drive, I drive for a living, so you, there is a big impact, but what can we do? It goes up daily almost you know or certainly weekly it goes up by at least 2p a week it's ridiculous i can't see how something can go up you know if, if we were talking about cat food or something it doesn't go up by 2p a week it's just it's the price of produce in china is rising so quickly that everyday items like an apple or a bag of carrots have become too expensive for average chinese people living on small salaries citizens are calling for price controls but the chinese regime has been slow to act here's that story as China experiences high inflation with rates hitting 4.5%, the price of produce at markets and retail outlets across the country has gone up drastically. Chinese citizens are wondering how they will continue to afford to buy produce when staples like green peppers and carrots have tripled or quadrupled in price. Um, in the United States, uh, that's a big problem. It's also a global problem. There are people in other countries rioting over food prices. Uh, prices of onions have gone up a lot in India, for example. Rice uh, staples of diets of, for people in many parts of the world are, are becoming sort of too expensive for them to afford. And it's, yeah, it's a bit of a crisis, frankly. very concerned about inflation in the developing world, less concerned in the developed world, partially because we don't feel it as fast as the developing world does, but they're making tracks in the direction of gold and silver.
Why are they buying it? Are they buying it because they're gold bugs? No. Are they buying it because they're fascinated with the shimmer and shine of the metal? No. They're buying it as an, as an antidote to poison. Indians have always bought gold for two reasons. Adornment, which is for cultural, festive, or weddings. Along with that, on the back of the mind, they have an investment value for it. Whether it's a family in India, China, France, the UK, they're all faced with the same dilemma. Demand in India rising 70% last year. In China, 54% last year for both gold and silver. The Industrial Commercial Bank of China with the World Gold Council has set up a program that allows individuals to invest as little as one gram of gold per day into a savings account denominated in gold. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more.